So I know we're all familiar with No Child Left Behind. What I'm actually more interested in is No Child Left Inside. I know we're all uh, familiar with Attention Deficit Disorder. I'm more interested in tackling Major Deficit Disorder. Uh, I strongly believe that there's an educational need to get kids outside of the classroom and be connected with the natural world. And I'm not the only one who feels this way, kind of following the footsteps of some people that have done some great work in this area, including Richard Luke and his children in Major Network. So how are we going to do this? Well, I'm proposing we leverage the growing popularity of citizen science and the latest and greatest mobile and web technologies. And that's basically where Project NOAA comes from. As mentioned, NOAA stands for Network Organisms and Habitats. And the founding team is comprised of four people. Martin Severly, Peter Horvath, Aaron Cruz, and myself, Yasser Ansari. We all met at NYU's Interactive Telecommunications Program in the fall of 08. We've become great friends ever since. Uh, my background is in molecular biology and bioinformatics. I worked at the Salk Institute doing some research back in the day. After that, I kind of moved into the mobile world where I developed everything from radiation detectors, mobile gaming hardware, new software for companies like Kyocera Wireless and Qualcomm. This is basically the marriage of the two things I like the most, uh, nature and mobile technology. So our mission is, is pretty simple. We want to help kids of all ages reconnect with the planet and learn more about the wildlife around us. Documenting it and noticing it is step one, but once they've noticed it, we want to really help them learn about it. We really want to kind of improve our collective eco-intelligence um, through this platform. And so we're going to have this audacious goal, too, to be the common global platform for documenting all the world's organisms. And if you're familiar with Twitter, which most of us are, I read an interesting thing from them. They kind of have this vision and goal of, of kind of measuring the pulse of the planet. And so when I read that, something triggered my mind as well. We really have this platform that can turn out to be something that can help measure the pulse of Mother Nature. So as people encounter nature and share their experiences in real time, we're collecting, processing, and sharing that information, kind of you know, maintaining a heartbeat of the planet. So I know that was a lot to take in. I wanted to pause for a second, just recap what we're all about. We're really about bringing citizen science to the masses. We're encouraging nature exploration, documentation, and learning. And we're doing it on top of this groundbreaking mobile platform that we've designed and built from scratch. Let me show you how it works. So Project NOAA is the name of the application we launched four months ago. It's a free application that's available today on the iTunes App Store. Um, it's got four main modes. The first mode is a spotting mode, which is really your gateway to the community and the platform and how you document your encounter with nature. It's designed from scratch to be very simple and quick to use. You tap on the category icon, you add some descriptive text, you attach a photo, and you submit it. It's important to note that this works outside of network coverage too. So if you're in the woods or something, we, we queue all the spottings for you. When you get back to network coverage, we batch up a little bit for you. The next mode is the location-based field guide. So based on your current location, we'll show you all the wildlife that's been documented around you. And you can search for this information either through a list view, as seen on the left, or through a tradi traditional map view on the right. When you click on any one of those spottings, we'll show you all the notes associated with them. And if that's been um, identified positively from our community, what we'll do is we'll provide you a link to the Encyclopedia of Life, which is like the Wikipedia for nature. We're actually working very closely with the EOI. We have access to some of the new APIs that they're not allowing other people to see quite yet. And what's powerful about this is you can actually start to learn about the wildlife that's around you when you're actually in proximity to it, which we think is really powerful. And so here's where the citizen science aspects really shine. We have the concept of field missions. So basically these field missions are collaboration with existing universities, research groups to showcase and highlight the research projects that they're already working on. So you can sift through them here, you can participate in the ones that you find interesting, and I'll talk more about those. Especially if you're dealing with kids in a network environment, right. how do you make this so that it is something where kids can share when you're dealing with all sorts of restrictions on how you can identify kids, where, what, you know, you're dealing with some location yeah. information that just you can't use it here. Right? There's a great example of that with uh, the Natural History Museum working with them on the Urban Biodiversity Network which is a series of schools that are, are working on different projects to document content in nature. And so they're actually um, using our API, our programming interface, and they have their own community with their restrictions on stuff. And as they collect content, they're sharing that with us. Our community helps identify it, and we shuttle it back to them. So when they share their content with us, all we're seeing is natural history museum, urban, bi urban biodiversity stuff. And when we provide that information back to them, then they funnel it and keep track of you know, which kids and which schools uh, share that information as well. So we're actually working on ways to, to make that easier for you. First question is what are your goals for say by the end of the year? And second is how do you, it seems to me that ratio seems odd that you 
less than one upload per person you've got some somebody who's done 200 mushroom spottings. Yeah, and that's 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 the exciting part about the mobile and web technology is you usually have a small group of people who are your super active users. Wikipedia is an example as well. All of the large bats we found edits come from a much smaller population. So I'm not too surprised by that breakdown. The other thing to keep in mind too is not everyone's contributing. A lot of people like to pull down and read the information as well, the, the field guide based stuff. Um, our goals as far as um, uh, numbers are concerned, I mean, my, my aggressive goal is by the, by the next six months to have a 10x increase in users, right? So we're only on the iPhone right now. We're, we've, we've sketched out a preliminary Android application. We have some simple phone stuff. Think about text messaging, getting a message back of a cool plant or animal around you, that sort of thing. So we have a pretty aggressive goal you know, to, to grow the community by, to by, ten, by tenfold. Well, well, speak some other examples of other communities that cross young kids and adults with a profile page? Um, that's a good question. Um, there's a lot of uh, like Club Penguin and things like that, perhaps. I mean, they're, they're more geared towards like younger kids, but there's parental you know, ability to get in there as well. That's clearly really designed for young kids. Yeah. I mean, what you're trying to do is very interesting in that you really are trying to connect amateurs and experts, young kids and older kids, but I mean, I, I think you, you touched on some of the complexity therein, both yeah. legal and just. It's very challenging. I mean, is that, is that something that you, of the, of the downloads, do you have a sense of uh, psychographic demographic like age range and, and what the community looks like? And sort of a follow on to Larry's question, among the downloads, are you seeing sustained usage and are you tracking sustained usage? Uh, as well as sort of viral pass off to test about the, the efficacy of your assumption there. Yeah, that's, there's a lot there, but let me kind of slice it nicely. Number one, uh, as far as analytics, yeah, we've embedded some code and we're starting to kind of make sense of that analytics of, you know, what modes are being used more often, how many times people are launch the application. Like most mobile applications, we're seeing a lot of similarity. You know, there's some great use at the beginning and things start to peter off over time. We're trying to increase the stickiness. Uh, we're working on uh, push notification systems for the iPhone to kind of, hey, when you come in proximity to something you might be interested in, say you're 